Greetings, everybody. This is going to be uh, part four of Holy Days. Actually, you could say it's part two of the uh, Feast of Trumpets. Uh, get your King James Bible, turn it to the book of Joel. We're going to be in chapter two. This is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Trumpets were used by the Lord first time as a call for the congregation to assemble themselves before the Lord. So, uh, call to worship in a way. Also, trumpets were used as a way to communicate in battle by the armies of Israel. Actually, Israel was called armies. And also, it was called to warn the people of an intend, intending battle. If you were in a walled city and the trumpets started to be blown, you'd know that there was an enemy uh, army approaching. So, now think about those things, you know, when uh, you read about the uh, trumpets in the book of Revelation. Call to battle. Uh, and uh, the uh, a call to uh, assemble yourselves before the Lord. Think about that. There's seven trumps or trumpets that are going to be blown and uh, as judgment against a evil and wicked world. And God's going to call his people to himself as he battles the world in the final battle. I have a feeling that the uh, Space Force that Trump created, well, you could say Ronald Reagan, uh, started it with the, uh, I forget what it was called, but uh, let me think. Oh, that's right. He called it Star Wars. Yeah. I had to think about that for a second. So, all right, Joel chapter two, let's get going here. You know, when you think about knowing what the trumpets meanings were in the Old Testament, you know, a call to, a call to assemble, the congregation to call to assemble itself and as a warning for war, um, and a call to battle. I mean, you know, think about what it means in the book of Revelation when the Lord uh, does his seven, the seven trumps or trumpets, you know? I mean, think about it. There's a lot of meaning in the Bible. So, all right, Joel chapter 2. All right, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet... Trumpet, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now remember, the day of the Lord is... Uh, <laughs> It's judgment upon a wicked world. Verse 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. See, this is referring to those that are the evil ones. To them, it's going to be a day of darkness. For God's people, it's going to be a day of redemption. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing 
shall escape them. Now, remember in 2 Peter, it talks about, I think it's 2 Peter, it's in Peter, about the, um, the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The Lord's going to destroy the world the next time with fire. Not water, fire. And nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array, before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. I kind of wonder if this is a uh, alluding to the angel angelic army of the Lord coming to fight the uh, Trump Space Force. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I wonder. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up the wall. They shall climb up the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. You know, this is Matthew 24 language. This is Revelation language. Maybe we should take a quick look. All right, let's go to Matthew 24 real quick. Verse 29. Immediately after... The tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together from one, uh, gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay. All right, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 6. You know, people, I try to tell people, you know, the book of Revelation is not in chronological or in order. It's not in order. It skips around. And people argue and say, yes, it is. You just don't understand. Well... All I know is that uh, Revelation 6 talks about the, uh, the coming of the king. And guess what? Really, until you get to Revelation 19, 20, 21, and 22, it really doesn't talk about the uh, coming of the king. So it skips around a little bit. All right, so let's go to Revelation chapter 6. I guess we'll read the whole thing. And then you'll, you know, get an idea. Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, color of communism, right? 
What color is the flag of Russia, communist Russia and, and China? It's red. Oh, yeah. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. That's basically telling you, a penny back in these days was the... Uh, an average day's wage for an unskilled laborer. And a measure of wheat or three measures of barley, uh, you're basically talking about a loaf of bread. So it basically a day's wage for a loaf of bread. Talk about uh, are people getting paid so little for their work or is food scarce? And the price of food is very expensive. Take your pick. But I think it has to do with famine. Verse 7, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that set on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. That's a quarter of the earth, people. That's over a billion people. That's like 1.5 or 0.7 billion people. That's a lot. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger. Ah, maybe that's why a day's wage for a measure of wheat, right? Loaf of bread. And with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Four-legged beasts or two-legged beasts? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses knock on your door and say, well, you know, when you die, you just don't exist. You're just, you're just asleep, you know. It's like you go to sleep before uh, on on uh, Christmas Eve, and then you wake up in the morning at the resurrection, and then ah, it's Christmas! Look under the Christmas tree. There's my presents. Uh, no, no, no. We do not cease to exist when the flesh body dies. I saw under the altar, the altar of God, people. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice. Oh, so these so, uh, sleeping souls that don't have any existence are crying with a loud voice? Really? How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Yeah, Lord, these people killed us. And we're asking for vengeance. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Ah, didn't we read that in Matthew 24, Joel chapter 2? A great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, that's one heck of an earthquake, isn't it? And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Ah, oh, your little uh, underground bunkers aren't going to help you, you devils. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, 
and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Back to Joel chapter 2. Verse 10. Uh, verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? See, there is a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. And the churches won't touch it with a 10-foot theological pole because it exposes their lies. Verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart. The Lord wants us to turn to him with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. We should be weeping and mourning for the things that we've done that offended the Lord. I know I do at times. Verse 13. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn, turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Wow. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Who's the bridegroom? Christ. Who's the bride? Israel. The woman. Hopefully a virgin. God the Father wants a virgin for his, his only begotten son. Not the whore of Babylon. Verse 17. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that think that New York City is the whore of Babylon, uh, it's part of it. It's part of it. I mean, when you look at the Bible alone, the Bible tells you that Babylon killed the prophets. And the only place that God sent his prophets to was Jerusalem. And you should know that the population of New York City was 25% of the you-know-who's, you know, Wall Street. I mean, let's face it, New York City is the financial center of the USA, Wall Street, and the you-know-who's, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs and, you know, what have you. Also, it is, um, is it not the headquarters of the United Nations? Oh, yeah. So, it's part of it. But God never sent his prophets to New York City. Or if he did, it's not in the Bible. So, you think about that. The whore of Babylon Think about that. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and let the and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep 
between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? And right now, people, we are being ruled by the heathen. I don't care who, which side gets wins the election. We're being ruled by the heathen, no matter what country you're in. Verse 18. So where is their God? That's where the heathen's saying. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will make, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder, hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. A fig tree is the symbol, the national symbol, one of the national symbols of Judah. And the vine is the symbol of Israel, northern Israel. Verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain, in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Did you know that locusts and the worms and the caterpillars is God's great army? And he's the one that sent the army to devour the food. You wonder why it's a day's wage for a loaf of bread? Maybe this is it. Now, this is end time, latter days, language. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, and upon the handmaids in those days, will I pour out my spirit. Isn't this what happened at Pentecost? Yes. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord 
shall call. All right, let's go to the book of Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H. -H. Um, sometimes I get Zephaniah and Zechariah mixed up, but uh, this is Zephaniah. Z is in zebra, E is in echo, P is in Paul, H is in Harry, A-N-I-A-H, verse 1. Boy, this is some strong language here. Now, sometimes the Lord's talking about something that he's going to do right away, but it is a shadow of what's coming for the future. So, verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah. Now, Josiah was a good king. So, the Lord's not doing this right then and there. Verse 2. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heavens and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling block, stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal, B-A-A-L, uh, that's just a generic word for Lord, and it had become so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me by that name anymore. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the Chemarims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven. What's the host of heaven? The fallen angels. And them that dwell of, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Mal Malcolm. Uh, that's another name of a false god. Verse 6. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Now, there's that day of the Lord again. Uh, it's going to be destruction for the wicked, but salvation for the Lord's people. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Strange apparel. As opposed to the white robes and revelation of those that have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 9, in the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and an howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. Howl, ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down all they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. So these people are saying, Ah, don't worry about the Lord. He's not going to do anything. So what is a lees? Uh, according to Webster, it's the grosser part of any liquor which is settled on the bottom of a vessel. In other words, it's the sediment uh, or the lees of wine. So, it doesn't sound like good stuff. 
Uh, let's see. Verse 12, And it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore their goods shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but shall not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but shall not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastened, hasteneth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath. Well, it's talking about the wicked. It's a day of wrath for the wicked. A day of destruction for them, but not for the righteous. Think about the flood of Noah. The flood of Noah was salvation for Noah and his family, but for the wicked, it was the day of destruction. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Didn't we just read this in Revelation 6, Matthew 24, and Joel chapter 2? Oh, yeah. A day of the trumpet. A day of the trumpet. Verse 16, a day of the trumpet. An alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. That they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire, the fire of his jealousy. Woo-hoo! But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. A speedy riddance. Have you ever heard the expression, good riddance? Well, that's what's going to be. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Turn to chapter 9. Zechariah 9. Verse 1, the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof, when the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. And Hamath also shall border thereby Tyrus and Sidon, though it be very wise. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver as the dust, and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out, and he will smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with fire. Now, Tyre and Sidon were, uh, in history, they were the uh, somewhat with uh, associated with Dan and the um, Phoenicians. They were uh, ocean-going merchants and traders. Some people think that they were associated with Carthage. Perhaps you've heard of Hannibal attacking Rome. I, that's what history. So, but one day she shall be devoured with fire. Verse 5. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron for her expectation shall be ashamed, and the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. Now, Ashkelon, Gaza, and Ekron were associated with the Canaanites. You know, the people that the Lord said, don't marry them, destroy them. When you go into the land, wipe them out, Israel. Wipe them out. Israel, wipe them out. Don't, don't marry them. Don't worship their gods. Listen to this, verse 6. 
And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Uh, Goliath was a Philistine. He was a giant, remember? And today, people will read that about bastard and say, well, that's somebody that, you know, uh, a, a child born that doesn't have a father. Well, that's only partially true. But these, a bastard back then was likened unto the Philistines, which were one of the tribes of the Canaanites. And they didn't have God the Father for their father. They had the fallen angels, Genesis chapter 6, as their father. They were bastards. They don't have God the Father. They got the other guy. When Jesus in John 8, 44 said, Year of your father the devil, he wasn't calling them names. He wasn't joking around. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, and I will take away his blood out of his mouth, take away his blood out of his mouth, and his abominations from between his teeth. Uh... Have you ever heard of uh, Baal, the false god? It means Lord. And then Canaan, the, 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 god, uh, the son of Noah through Ham that was cursed. And then you got cannibal, Canaan and Baal. It's a contraction of Canaan and Baal. Cannibal. They would eat eat they would kill and eat people what do you think they're talking about here and i will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations between from between his teeth what do you think they're talking about here but he that remaineth even he shall be for our god and he shall be a governor in judah and ekron as a jebusite and I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passeth by, and because of him that returneth. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more, for now I have seen with mine eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh upon, unto thee. Ah, salvation, people. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Oh, where have I read that before? Uh, wow. Chaplain Bob, where have I read that before? That sounds familiar. Oh, I remember Matthew 21. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is right after the Lord's Supper. He's getting ready to go into Jerusalem and uh, to be crucified shortly. This is like just before Passover, before the crucifixion. Verse 1, Matthew 21, verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an, an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying... Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees, and straw them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, 
Who is this? Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And here's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Verse 12, Matthew 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up my sons, O Zion, against my sons. O Greece! O Greece! Isn't that amazing? They mention Greece here. Well, guess what? Language the New Testament was written in. Greek. I don't care what the Hebrew liar roots liars say. Hebrew liar roots liars. They're liars. It was written in Greek. There's 5,000 partial manuscripts of the New Testament in Greek. There are zero Hebrew ones. Zero. Zero. O Zion against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Guess what? Greece conquered almost the entire known world under Alexander. When Jesus came into the world, born of a virgin, the world spoke Greek. Oh, yeah. But they want you to believe that Jesus spoke to Pilate in Hebrew. I don't think so. I think Jesus spoke to Pilate in Greek because that was the common language back in those days. Just like English. Do you know English is the second? Uh, it's the number one second language of the world. I mean, Chinese. There's more people that speak Chinese than any other language in the world. But for a second language, people that know a second language, English is the number one second language of the world. If you've got a college degree and you're a native English speaker, you can go almost anywhere in the world and get a job teaching English. Well, I don't know about now, but, you know, a year ago before all this crazy stuff happened. And oh, by the way, this is uh, November 27, 2020, the day after Thanksgiving in the United States. Verse 13, when I bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. That's right, Greece conquered the world. Rome had only been a recent conqueror when Christ was born. Rome had only recently conquered um, Jerusalem. Verse 14, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as a lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet! And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls, and as the corners of the altar. 
and the Lord their God shall save them in that day. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. For how great is his goodness. Wow. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids. All right, people, this is the end of the fourth part of the uh, trumpet. Well, I'm sorry, the feast, the feast days of the Lord. This is part two of the trumpet part. Uh, I'm going to do the New Testament for the trumpet part. So I guess this will be the third part of the trumpets because I want to make the uh, New Testament its own study uh, because the book of Revelation has seven trumpets and there is a very, very, uh, well, it's going to be important, at least to me and I hope to you too. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.